Picture this, Australia, 1932, a vast landscape under siege by emus. Imagine the sunburnt plains of Western Australia, a land usually punctuated by the hardy outback farmer and his livestock. But in 1932, the farmers found themselves sharing their fields with a new feathery menace. Thousands upon thousands of emus had descended upon their lands, an avian army in full march. These were no ordinary birds. Emus, native to Australia, are the second largest birds in existence standing tall at nearly six feet. They're robust, fast, and when it comes to food, they're not picky. So when they found the vast wheat fields laid out like a buffet, they feasted. The year 1932 was a tough one for the Australian farmers. The Great Depression had hit, wheat prices were plummeting, and to add to their woes, they now had a crowd of uninvited guests helping themselves to their crops. Estimates suggest that there were about 20,000 emus on a rampage across the farmlands. The damage was staggering, acres of crops were decimated, fences were trampled, leaving an open invitation for rabbits to join the destruction. In the face of such an onslaught, the farmers were helpless. Their shotguns were no match for the sheer number of emus that descended upon their fields each day. It was like trying to hold back a feathered tide with a garden hose. The situation was desperate, and so the desperate farmers turned to the Australian government for help, leading to what we now know as the Great Emu War. The battle lines were drawn, the enemy was at the gate, and the stage was set for one of the most peculiar wars in history. But as we'll see, this war was not just about birds and bullets. It was a war that held up a mirror to human nature, our relationship with the environment, and the unexpected consequences of messing with Mother Nature. Stay tuned as we delve deeper into this feathered fiasco and explore the twists and turns of the Great Emu War. In response to the Emu invasion, the Australian government made a decision that would go down in history. Picture this, it's 1932 and emus are wreaking havoc on the wheat fields of Western Australia in a move that seems more like a plot of a comedy film than a chapter of a history book, the government decided to deploy the military to combat the flightless invaders. The Minister of Defence, Sir George Pierce, gave the order and the Emu War was on. Soldiers were mobilised, armed with Lewis machine guns, the same ones that had seen action during the First World War. The public's reaction was a mix of disbelief, amusement and, for some, a sense of relief. After all, these were not ordinary pests. These were six-foot-tall birds capable of running at incredible speeds, and they were destroying their livelihoods. The media, both local and international, latched onto the story with fervor. Headlines screamed about the impending war, painting a picture of a brave, albeit unusual, battlefront. The narrative was irresistible. A modern, industrialized nation going to war against birds. Meanwhile, the soldiers, seasoned veterans of the World War I, were optimistic. Major GPW Meredith of the 7th Heavy Battery of the Royal Australian Artillery was put in charge. He and his men were confident, even eager. They were trained, they were armed, and they were facing an enemy that didn't even have the ability to fly. How hard could it be? But beyond the humor, and the absurdity, there was a serious intention. The government hoped to protect the farmers' crops, preserve the livelihoods of their citizens, and perhaps demonstrate the might of the Australian military. Little did they know that the emus were not to be underestimated. Armed with machine guns and a sense of duty, the soldiers set out to wage war against the emus. As they loaded their guns and made their plans, they had no idea of the challenges and surprises that lay ahead in what would become one of the most unusual conflicts in history. The war was on. Little did the soldiers know they were in for quite a challenge. As the Australian sun beat down onto the parched Western Australian farmland, the soldiers squared off against an army of emus, their feathers glistening in the afternoon light. The emus, unimpressed by the show of force, simply continued their foraging, completely oblivious to the impending conflict. The soldiers, armed with their machine guns, took aim at the unsuspecting birds. But the emus, with their surprising agility and speed, 
proved to be elusive targets. The bullets seemed to have little effect on the emus, who scattered and regrouped with astonishing resilience. It was as if the emus were mocking their human adversaries, their raucous calls echoing across the plain. The soldiers, undeterred, pressed on. They tried a new strategy. They would herd the emus into a tight group, making them easier targets. But the emus, with their keen sense of danger, scattered at the first sign of trouble, leaving the soldiers firing at empty air. It was like trying to catch smoke with a net. The military, in their hubris, had underestimated their feathered foes. The emus, with their strong legs and robust bodies, proved to be far more resilient than anyone had anticipated. Despite the soldiers' best efforts, the emu population remained largely unchecked. As the sun set on the first day of battle, the soldiers could only watch as the emus disappeared into the twilight, their silhouettes a mocking reminder of the day's failure. The soldiers, their spirits dampened, began to realize the magnitude of the task ahead. The emus were not the easy targets they had been made out to be. The first day of the Great Emu War had ended, not with a bang, but with a whimper. The soldiers, initially confident in their victory, were left to contemplate their defeat. The emus, for their part, continued their daily routine, seemingly unfazed by the day's events. As it turns out, emus are not so easily defeated. The war was far from over. Faced with unexpected resistance, the soldiers had to rethink their strategy. It was clear that the emus were not your run-of-the-mill enemy. They were swift, elusive, and seemingly impervious to the soldiers' efforts. In response, the military decided to shift gears. Instead of relying on traditional warfare tactics, they introduced a new method, the use of trucks. These vehicles were used to chase down the emus, a strategy that proved more effective than the previous foot pursuits. But the trucks were not the only innovation. The soldiers also started employing ambush tactics. They would lie in wait near the emus' favorite watering holes and feeding grounds, and strike when the birds least expected it. This guerrilla warfare, if you will, started to turn the tide in the humans' favor. Eventually, these new strategies began to yield results. The emu population, once a formidable force, started to dwindle. The soldiers' relentless pursuit, coupled with their innovative tactics, was finally making a dent. The emus, who had once seemed invincible, were now on the back foot. And so, after weeks of intense battle, the military campaign came to an end. The emus were beaten back, their numbers significantly reduced. The land was once again safe for the farmers, the crops no longer under threat from these voracious birds. But the victory was a bittersweet one. The cost of the war, in terms of resources, time and the negative publicity it generated, left many questioning whether it had been worth it. The war had been won, yes, but at what price? The Great Emu War, as it came to be known, was a testament to the unpredictability of nature and the lengths humans would go to protect their livelihood. It was a clash of species, a battle of wills, and ultimately, a lesson in humility. In the end, the emus were beaten back, but at a cost that left many questioning whether the war had been worth it. With the dust settled, the Great Emu War left an indelible mark on Australian history. The aftermath of this peculiar conflict was as intriguing as the war itself. Public reaction, both within Australia and internationally, was a mixture of amusement and disbelief. Many saw the Emu War as a testament to the tenacity and resilience of these seemingly benign birds, while others viewed it as a symbol of the unpredictable and often absurd challenges that nature can throw our way. In the years following the Great Emu War, the Emu population in Western Australia bounced back. Despite the best efforts of the Australian military, the resilient creatures proved that they were not so easily defeated. The emus continued to thrive, their numbers swelling with each passing season. It was clear that human intervention alone was not sufficient to control the emu population. Recognizing this, the Australian government took a different approach. Instead of resorting to military force, they implemented a bounty system, 
incentivizing farmers and hunters to cull the emu population. This approach proved to be far more effective, leading to a gradual decrease in the emu population over time. The Great Emu War holds a unique place in Australian history and culture. It is a story that has been told and retold, often with a sense of humor and irony. It has inspired songs, documentaries, and even video games, making it a part of Australia's cultural fabric. But beyond its entertainment value, the Great Emu War serves as a lesson. It highlights the complexities and challenges that arise when humans and nature collide. It reminds us of the resilience of nature and how our attempts to control it can often lead to unexpected and humorous outcomes. While the Great Emu War may sound like a quirky footnote in history, it serves as a reminder of the complex relationship between humans and nature and the unpredictable challenges that can arise when these two forces collide. Let's always remember that each chapter of history no matter how peculiar, has something profound to teach us.